morning <laughs> yeah it's morning and it's cold out there and tomorrow um paul and i are going to be moving toward inland we're going to go down the pacific coast just a little bit and see a couple beaches that are further south and then we're going to start heading over so probably by next week we're going to be in arizona yay arizona but I really got to say, I have so enjoyed California. It's gorgeous. And the people here are wonderful. I always had a kind of a different um, attitude towards California that, oh, you're all so perfect and you're all into this and all into that. There are a lot of tough laws here in California, but not, <laughs> I found out not everybody follows all the rules. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of trash I see kind of left around. I see people littering, although the fine for littering is $1,000 if they catch you littering. So um, you're into the recycling thing big time. And there are a lot of people that when I was on the beach that um, I hung out with most of the summer. And then when Paul came west, um, we spent a lot of time there. Um there were people that would come and they'd have those little things that they'd use with their hand to, to those little um, tools to pick up something. There would be massive amounts of people come with a bag and one of those and they just went around the beach and they picked all the trash up. So you're organized up here, but you still have a lot of work to do, California, in getting people not to litter. A lot of times we would come and go to the beach in the morning and there would be just trash around those fire pits where they didn't, they just left. They didn't bother to pick up a lot of trash, but then comes the, the trash picker uppers and they just would go around and pick everything up. So yeah, uh, California is a beautiful, beautiful place. The climate is so predictable and there's not that much of an up and down. I know in Arizona, it can be 90 degrees in the afternoon, but in the morning it was like, uh, 55 degrees so they're huge huge um variation but not so much in california and I, I forgot to give you your coffee it's coffee time everybody here's yours there you go yeah so cheers yeah this is my second cup so a little cooled off oh that is so good so good mm -hmm. Love me coffee. Yeah, love me coffee. Um, well, what is so different right now? Oh my gosh. What is one of the things that is so different? And, and when I'm parking in a parking lot, not on the curb, if I'm doing, um, what I call the urban nestling, I've coined a new phrase, urban nestling, because that's the way I feel about it. But first, let me explain the difference. Is that if I'm parked on a curb, I can't do this. But if I'm in a parking lot, what I can do is I pull in or back in and then Paul pulls in and we create this space in between our vehicles. Now we try not to, you know, we don't want it to be too large because there's, it's a parking lot and the other people are around. But we, I go to the very edge of my line. He goes on that side to the very edge of his line. And then what we do is we create this space in between. So this morning we got here early and it's still dark. Uh, the, you know, we're in autumn right now and heading towards winter. So it doesn't lighten up as early as in the summer. But I had to walk way over to go uh, dump a little bag of garbage. Well, you know, I wouldn't have done that if I was here by myself. And, and I did, I do go early to parking lots when I was solo and I was solo for a good five years, but in the dark, I wouldn't have walked way over there. But with Paul here, I just walked over and he can, you know, kind of keep track of what's going on out there. I felt just a little bit safer. So there's a big difference. And then we've got this space that we can create and Abby can get out and, you know, just sort of be outside just a little bit more. 
and we can put our chairs out there and I can open my side window or my side door and I can put my bins. I Right now my bins are sitting outside. Let me see. Let me show you what we got here. We've got them outside over, over here. And then we've got this space in between Paul's Ram, ProMaster, and mine. So yeah, um, I just opened my door here. The winds, when I wanted to like sit on the edge and record this, so, you know, get a little different view, but the wind is blowing. The wind in San Jose blows a lot, and which makes it really nice. It's gonna be, actually it's gonna get up to almost like 89 degrees this afternoon. It's chilly right now, but yeah, um, but even in the afternoon, if it's hot, the wind is blowing and it keeps you cool. So that's really nice. California is a wonderful state. Good. So I got some new bin colors. In case you don't know how to do this, there's um, thick like poster board in here. It's not cardboard. I didn't want it so thick, but it's like poster board. I got it do uh, Dollar Tree. I did read an article. Dollar Tree is going to have to move their prices up because inflation is happening and gas is up um, to move all of our product for the truckers. So the dollar, I you know, they're going to have to raise their prices. But yeah, I just I taped it around. Yeah, and then what I can do because I don't really want to see what's in there. I don't like that. And y'all help me decide this. I talked about this last year. And I said, how, what can I do? And y'all said, well, why don't you put cardboard? And then the, the idea kept growing and growing. And then what I can do is I can change my color schemes a uh, little bit. And I've got the color schemes here too. This is my clothes drawer. Yeah. So, and then if you notice, looky here, purple, and this sort of a mint like a turquoise, but this is actually more of a mint color. So and I got my pink here. This is my only flower. Well, okay, that's not my only flower. I've got these roses here. Um, uh, when I recorded or when I uploaded the video of Paul's van tour, a lot of, a uh, few of you mentioned, oh, you know, his, his van looks so manly, whereas you should send Lee in and she can uh, like make it look uh, more uh, attractive or whatever. You know, he likes that. Men like that man, that manly look. Not everyone. If you remember Jack, when I did his van tour, he had the color schemes going and he had this, uh, you know, feel good stuff like his, his, um, his uh, essential oils and his, um, what is that called? Incense burner, things like that. <clears throat> I mean, he had stuff like that, but not every male is like that. He likes his manly look. Uh, but, and you said, well, and, and um, Lee's looks so girly. Well, I don't know if it looks, oh, here, let's do this. I don't know if it looks so girly, but it definitely do, I do like aesthetics. I like things to look um, really nice and neat and clean. So, yeah. I'm an artist type. Now down here, we got, I, it's getting warmer, or I should say it's getting cooler outside. So I can put my yoga blanket out and the link for it is in the video description and in my storefront. But I've got this down and it really looks nice. There we go. Yeah, I love this, the yoga blanket. The reason I don't put it down in the summer is it is very soft but there must be a little bit of a wool blend in there and in the summer it's not comfortable if i'm sweaty so in the summer i lay down the towels and they're just more absorbent of the um if i get sweaty yeah so yesterday i did my laundry I, what i wanted to do was clean out all the sand <laughs> i've spent so much time at the beach oh my gosh it's been so fun but there was sand, it, it was just, I was careful, but it's still gonna come in, it just is. So I washed all my blankets, right? Uh, I 
pulled everything out even the things that I put the little cloth that I put on my bins everything and my clothes got cleaned up now if you notice I've got Sun Santa Cruz Sun Santa Cruz um, they have a really nice at the mall in Santa Cruz they have a a really nice a mall with a really great uh, store that sells everything Santa Cruz so um, Paul wanted to get one too it's also, and everybody walks around with these Santa Cruz yeah so got my sweatshirt for the winter thought I'd wear it yeah. there we go and then I've got my neck gaiters up yeah these are nice I've shown these neck gaiters these are nice for uh, for um, mask mandates yeah I can still breathe out of them but it stops any any liquids so like when you're talking or whatever it comes out yeah a lot of people say well these don't work very well well actually neither do the um, the surgical ones either that for for viruses anyways yeah so yeah if you're a virologist <laughs> and you want to keep from getting viruses coming in you have this whole suit you got to put on if you look at virology yeah so if you're a virologist you know that these are like sort of silly yeah we won't go into it yeah but if there's a mandate i respect it i'm respectful so this is what's going on everybody we got summer is over my california tour well i should say once we i go down the uh Pacific Highway, I'll be doing more filming. So you may get like one more, you may get one or two more of what's going even further south um, in LA and yeah. So cool, yeah, it's been a great summer. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm a bit bronzed, I mean, you might not see it here, but my 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 feet, my toes, my legs, my, uh, <laughs> everything is bronze. I've still, I've got that bronze look. But you know, I was very careful putting my sunblock on and i don't use sunscreen now i use sunblock it's a mineral sun uh protection to where it blocks blocks the sun you don't have to completely keep reapplying it as long as you don't get wet and you don't have to wait uh like 15 20 minutes before going out in the sun to get protect protection so there's one thing i want to talk about i saw this video on YouTube and it really resonated with me and I wanted to talk about it it's about having a strong personality now a lot of people might distinguish a strong personality with being oh loud and obnoxious but that is not true a strong personality is a single-minded person who knows what they want and they're not afraid to express it and they aren't in the in the habit of putting other people down because they might have a different opinion and i'll go into the law all of the traits of having a strong personality now i do have i notice the traits i would say yes i am a person with a very strong personality that i know what i want and i'm goal oriented and i'm single-minded on when i have puts my mind to something and i do it but I did want to express that having a strong personality is a needed thing to have while you're a nomad, when you're out on the road. And the reason I say this, we got lots more. This is Monday traffic going on. Let me close this door. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we got a lot of traffic going to be happening. So having... A strong personality as a nomad is a real asset because you're out here maneuvering in a lot of cases outside of your comfort zone I mean even I've been a nomad now for five years living in my van solely everything that I own is in my minivan I'm very careful with my minivan I don't abuse it and I don't um, and I take care of it. I maintain my minivan because it's my home. But I'm out here maneuvering and have been as a solo female for all this time. And if I was, um, if I didn't have such a strong personality, I would probably find it kind of difficult. Now, 
as a nomad, I feel as if my personality has gotten a bit stronger over these past five years. So I think it actually um, organically happens to us, some to, to larger and some to um, lesser degrees. But I think with mine and since I've been doing YouTube videos for the past almost two years now, uh, yeah, my, my personality has gotten stronger and more refined. So I want to go over some qualities of a strong personality because I think it would be great for anybody who really wants to do this and maybe somebody who doesn't, that is maybe a little bit more timid, these qualities can be um, worked on. You, they can be developed. Now, I've mentioned about creating your future. With that, you can create a new personality. Yes, we can. Uh, um, a, a personality can be developed. Now, what you can be in a good mood, or let's say good mood, bad mood. Let's use maybe bad mood because that might be something that a lot of people can relate to. Something happened and I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. Well, if this goes on over time, your temperament, you will maybe have kind of a more angry temperament or maybe a more depressed temperament. And if that continues to go on and on, it will create a depressed personality or a negative personality or a personality that is, um, you know, can grate on people and grate on yourself or an angry personality, a critical personality. So you can create, it can start out as a mood and move all the way over time into your personality. Well, let's go ahead and start creating your personality with a different mood, like a more confident mood, a more happy mood. You can be create a more happy personality, a more confident personality by starting out with a mood and moving on to a temperament, moving on over to a personality. So what are the traits of a strong personality that we can start developing? And number one would be that you're opinionated and you are convincing, but you are not an arrogant person. You know your mind. You have an opinion about things. I mean, you as a nomad, you have to have opinions. You have, and you have to be strong in your opinions. But you're not so arrogant that you will not let anybody else offer their opinions. You don't mind listening to other people and what they have to say. So, having that strong personality, a lot of people think that a strong personality is just somebody who's loud and obnoxious. Not so. Not so at all. Another trait is you are decisive. You are not afraid to make a decision. You room, you don't ruminate on every little detail. You don't get that far into it. You weigh things out. You look at the main points and then you go with it. You make a decision. You're active and you're a mover and a shaker. You want to get things moving along and you don't want to just sit there, put them on the back burner because you can't make a decision. Strong-minded people are very decisive. Strong-minded people are led by reason and not so much by emotion. And I, oh my goodness, I've talked about this so many times. This is the captain and this is the soldier. This obeys this. This is where your reasoning happens in your mind. And the body is where you hold a lot of your emotions, your adrenaline, your um, things that that help with your emotions down here, your heart, things like that. Now, a lot of people say, we'll be led by your heart. Well, sometimes you do have to do that. And I do get led by the spirit of the Lord. I get led like, ooh, do that. Sometimes it might not be reason, but you strong-minded people know the difference between that. But in most cases, you're led by reasoning. You've weighed things out. You've looked at things logically. And then you can make a good decision. A strong-minded person is very careful of who they let into their lives. And I have been like this for years. I'm, I'm very careful about who I choose as my inner circle with my friends, my confidence. Strong-minded people 
are not afraid to be alone. If they don't have people around that they can trust, they would much rather just be alone. I was solo for a very long time. I mean, I love to be around people and I love to get to know people. But until I know that they're the kind of person that I want in my life, that they're positive people and that I can trust them and that they, they do what they say they're going to do, I, I'm very careful about who I let into my life. So, And I'm sure as a nomad that that is going to be a really good quality to carry around with you. A strong-minded person sticks to their morals. Now, most people will stick to their morals in a lot of their cases, but there are areas in their life where they will kind of waver a little bit. A strong-minded person rarely wavers on their morals. A strong-minded person does not crave attention. And that's a, a little contrary to, I think, what people believe. We're not attention seekers. And we don't try to gain the approval of other people just to gain attention. What happens is with a strong-minded person is that they gain attention naturally. They want to help other people. So therefore, those strong-minded people that you're going to be developing, people will want to come to you. You don't have to go do things to gain attention. But you don't crave attention. You are just being who you are. And you're not honest, you're not gaining the attention to seek approval from other people. If you're strong-minded, you don't need the approval of other people. There's where the audaciousness comes in. You have the audacity to be who you are and to say your opinion and to be exactly who you want to be. You've created your future. Now you're going to let it manifest as you move toward the future. It's going to just be manifesting and your personality is going to be developing in that direction. So have the audacity to be who you want to be. Decide what you want. Decide that you want to be this loving person who would be a good friend to other people and just watch this come towards you and manifest in your life. Strong-minded people are very goal-oriented. Oh yeah, and that is just so me. I'm very goal-oriented. and But a strong-minded person also knows when they can break down that large goal. Because you need to break down those goals. I remember in another video, I actually mentioned that a long-term goal can be put off. But if you take that long-term goal and break it into pieces, a bite-sized pieces, you can actually accomplish them easier. So if it's just a more of a short-term, 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 that we are humans are better at accomplishing a short-term goal because you get on it right away. If it's a long-term goal, you might end up, it's human to kind of put those things off to the very last minute. But a strong-minded person is smart enough to use their logic to break up their goals and just do bite-sized pieces. And they don't put up with excuses. So these are things you want to develop. Do not put up with any excuses from yourself, from yourself or from other people. Strong-minded people don't dwell on the past. And they don't put up with excuses. Well, this happened in the past or things like that. But you are willing to look at why things didn't work out in the past and you take them out and you look at them and you're actually willing to look at what went wrong in the past and learn from it. You strong-minded people learn from their mistakes. They don't dwell on this, but they learn from it. And here's the biggest one. Strong-minded people, strong personalities, they are fearless. That's why people love to be around them. But I'll tell you what, they can be so intimidating because they are fearless and they are audacious. They have the audacity to be who they are and they're confident in doing that. And a lot of people find that intimidating that they don't try to seek other people's approval. They don't need it. They know who they are and they go forth. Now, when I say being fearless, a lot of people I say, well, Everybody has fear, yes.
but you move through your fear and you do it anyways. You might be a little apprehensive like, oh, this might, this is going to take some bravery here. But bravery comes from doing things that you might fear and you're going forth anyways. Strong personality type people are fearless and they go do it. Now, if you're a nomad, you already know that you're fearless because you did it. You're out here moving. Now, I want to mention this little a phrase called urban nestling, and I talk about it in one of our overnight um, on our podcast, This Nomad Life with Lee and Paul, and we talk about this. Well, urban nestling, because if you are in an urban setting, and in California, there's most places you can, unless there's a parking sign that says you can't, you can park on the curb. I mean, they do have a lot of signs like, you can't park here like after a certain time or you can't park here anytime or things like that. Or, or you might end up um, blocking a bike path. So, yes, you, not every curb you can park on, but they have a lot of curb parking going on with a lot of people doing it. Well, you almost what I call it is you're nestling in the urban setting. You don't want to be out there, you know, with sitting out there with music blaring. You're just sort of nestling in with everybody else and you're not uh, making a big scene. You're sort of stealth. But I call it nestling because that's kind of like what I felt like I was doing. And I was doing it in an urban setting. So for me, it's either urban nestling or you're kind of boondocking out on BLM land or out in, um, you know, federal land, things like that. So there's where that... um, phrase comes from because for me it was I was just nestling in with the locals and just um not making not making waves because kind of moving in doing doing like like they say when in Rome do as the Romans do yeah well when I was in California I did as the Californians did and sort of nestled in with them well I hope you find this really interesting and you can develop a personality a new personality you meditate on it and you vision the kind of person that you want to be. Well, what I've said in the past is if you want to have the type of friends you want to have, write down the qualities that you want them to have and then go be it. Go go develop those those qualities. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you everyone for watching this. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want stickers and magnets in my book, it's on minivanlee.com or minivan-lee.com. And just scroll down just a little bit for the magnets and the stickers. It's a way to support me. And with my book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Lee Way. Now, I do have the link in the video description. I'll put it in the comments section. And it's also right there, too. And don't forget about earlier videos. Just go down and check out some of my videos on how to wash my hair, how I sleep, how I set up my bedding, um, just all kinds of things um, to how to live the nomad life. So don't be afraid to go and just um, scroll down and find some newer videos, or I should say some older videos that I've done in the past. I love you guys. You guys have a great day. Bye.